Okay, hi, so welcome to this video on static electricity. So in this video, we're just going to cover what static electricity is and how um, we can answer questions based on two insulators rubbing together and producing static electricity. All right, so first of all, what we need to know, and this is really a recap, you should already know this, uh, but it's the structure of an atom. Okay, so here you see um, a diagram of an atom. It's made up of the nucleus. Okay, so this part in here is the nucleus. And in the nucleus, you have protons and neutrons. All right, now I'm just going to say that protons, okay, they have a plus one charge. And by plus one, that means that they are positive, right? I'll just write that above. Positive. So they are positively charged, all right? However, the neutrons, well, what's their charge? They have absolutely no charge, right? They're neutral. That's why they're called neutrons. They don't have a charge at all. All right, and then they're in the nucleus, which is in the center of the atom, and circling outside are these smaller things, which we call electrons. Okay, electrons. And they have a minus one charge, which means that they are negative. Okay, they are negatively charged. Now, what's important is the only thing that's going to be moving from one substance to another, okay, are these electrons, right? When you have uh, things like protons and neutrons moving, that's when you're talking about radioactivity, but not when you're talking about electricity, right? Electricity is basically the movement of electrons, right? So when we produce things which are charged, it's because something has either gained an electron or electrons, okay? If you gain electrons, you'll become more negative because they're negative. Uh, but if you lose electrons, then you'll become more positive because you're losing that negative charge, right? But the nucleus stays where it is. Okay, so moving quickly on. Static electricity is where you produce electricity, so you produce a uh, charge, but the charge isn't moving around in a current, right? Static means basically stationary, it's staying where it is, and so the charge just stays where it is. Now, you've probably felt this, um, you may have touched a surface and you've got a, um, got a shock, it zapped you through the finger. Uh, basically, that's because something has become uh, charged, and that is static. Now, the way that uh, static electricity is produced is when insulators are rubbed together, right? And there's two examples that you need to know. So, insulators are things which don't conduct electricity, obviously, okay? And so, if we have a polythene rod, okay? So, a polythene rod, let me just change the color. There we go. You've got a polythene rod. Now, polythene is a type of plastic, um, and polythene is, of course, an insulator, right? Plastic is an insulator. It doesn't conduct electricity, right? And then you rub it with a cloth, okay? What happens is that electrons from the cloth... Okay, so if I take my cloth like so, and I rub it on the polythene rod, then what happens is that electrons from the cloth, and I'll draw those in blue to show where they've come from, are transferred to the polythene rod. Okay, so you have electrons now sitting on the polythene rod. Extra electrons, that is. Okay, and because those electrons are now on the polythene rod, that means that the polythene is now negatively charged, okay? And the cloth has lost those electrons. And so the fact it's lost electrons means that the cloth is now positive. Not because it's gained anything from the polythene, but because it's actually lost the electrons, right? It doesn't gain protons, remember they don't move, but the electrons have been lost. And so now you have static charge on both. They're not conductors, so that charge is not going to be transferred anywhere else. Um, but they're static, which means that they're both going to um, remain charged, okay? It's not permanent. Eventually, those electrons uh, will be lost somewhere else. could be to the air. Um, if you put those two back together, then maybe uh, the electrons will go back from the polythene to the cloth. But for, for the moment, at least, uh, they are charged, okay? And so if you uh, were to touch that polythene rod or to touch the cloth, you could get a small shock, um, and that would be why. All right, now on the other hand, perspex, okay, let's go down. Here we are, perspex is a different kind of plastic and perspex has the opposite effect. If you were to take the cloth, okay, we'll do that again. Uh, it's not like that. So you were to take the cloth and you were to rub it on the perspex rod, okay, and then put it back. What happens is actually uh, the opposite of what we saw before. And that is that electrons uh, from the perspex are transferred to the cloth rather than the other way around which means 
that you now have a buildup of electrons on the cloth, okay, which makes the cloth now negatively charged. And the perspex has lost its electrons. It hasn't gained anything. But the loss of electrons cause things to be positively charged. And so the perspex here would be positively charged. Okay, and so now that's basically exactly the same thing as happened before, but the other way around, as in the plastic, this time is positive uh, with perspex, but with polythene, polythene gains electrons, and so that's the one that's negative, right, and the cloth comes positive. Okay, now lastly, uh, if you were to take, just like with, um, if you have a magnet, okay, it's not the same thing, because a magnet, uh, magnetic field is very different to electric charge, but it's a good analogy to use. If you take uh, a magnet and you have the north and the south pole, right, the the opposites attract each other and the things which are the same repel each other. And that's actually the same with electrical charge. So if I were to take something that was uh, positive, okay, let's say this cloth at the top, right, is positive, and I were to put it near this cloth at the bottom, which is negative, okay, they would actually attract each other. They would pull each other towards each other because positive and negative attract. However, if I were to, let's just move this up here out of the way again. If I were to take this perspex rod, okay, which is positive, and I were to put it near the first cloth, which is also positive, okay, those two things actually don't like each other because they're both both the same kind of charge, positive and positive. Well, opposites attract, okay, and like charges repel. So what we say is they repel each other and it sort of push each other away, okay, and the cloth would not want to be near the perspex. Uh, rod because they both have the same charge. Let's just move this back. There we go. Okay, so opposite charges attract and like charges repel. And that's something you need to know as well. Because if they gave you a scenario uh, in, in a question, in an exam, and let's say you had two things which are the same charge, they could ask you, you know, if, the, if you put them near each other, why why do they why do they repel each other okay and that would be because of the like charges or they could just say what would happen and you would say that the two objects would repel each other because like charges repel right and obviously the opposite uh, if those charges were opposites okay so we're going to stop there that was only a short video um you need to know what static electricity is and how it's created obviously the main part of this topic is not static electricity but it's electric circuits but static electricity is something you can be asked about as well so i hope that was helpful if you do have any questions on that please feel free to leave uh, a question in the comment box below or send me a direct email and i'll get back to you um but i look forward to seeing you in the next one